Hi guys, in this video we will be looking at the industrial revolution. Okay, the transformation of industry and the economy in Britain between 1780s and 1850s was called the first industrial revolution. Okay, and uh, which had far reaching effects on Britain later, similar were occurred in other European countries and in the USA. Okay, we will be uh, dealing with phase by phase development in the uh, industrial revolution. Okay, uh, this made it possible to produce goods on a massive scale, mass production. The chapter outlines the changes in the cotton and iron industries, steam, a new source of power, and uh, uh, led to faster movement of transportation. Railways were introduced by ships, railways, many of the inventions of the businessmen who brought about the changes. Uh, all these things well, will be dealt, and also the life uh, of the common people under industrialization. Okay. So beginning, why Britain? Okay, Britain. So Britain was politically stable since the 17th century because with England, Wales and Scotland unified under a monarchy. Okay, this meant that the uh, Eng kingdom had common laws, a single currency and a market that was not fragmented by local authorities levying taxes on goods. It had a proper structure. The government was proper, there was a proper currency and there were no internal conflicts. To some extent okay uh, and in the 18th century England had been a major economic change later described as an agricultural revolution okay this was the process by which bigger landlords had brought up small farms near their own properties and enclosed the village common lands thus creating very large estates the farming was developed farming was developed on a large scale okay and towns and trades and finance okay from the early 18th century Many towns in Europe were growing in area and in population. Out of the 19 European cities whose population doubled between 1750 and 1800, 11 were in Britain. Okay, largest of them was London. Actually, in this we are seeing how uh, London has become a global banking center. Okay, London was, had also acquired a global significance. By the 18th century, a center of global trade had shifted from the Mediterranean ports of Italy and France to the Atlantic ports of Holland and Britain. Still later, London replaced Amsterdam as the principal source of loans for international trade. London also became the center of triangular trade network that drew in England, Africa and the West Indies. Okay, the, um, companies trading in America, Asia also had their offices in London. Okay, London is slowly becoming very very important in the world center. Okay, in England the movement of goods between markets helped in a good uh, by a good network of uh, proper connectivity of uh, network of roads uh, railway lines and waterways were there okay uh, all these things were properly done in britain okay industrialization occurred in britain from the 1780s to the 1850s this is explained partly due to the factors like uh, uh, factors we can say that uh, in now we will be discussing of the two factors a range of technological changes that increased the production levels dramatically and a new transportation network created by the construction of railways. In both the developments, if the dates are read carefully, no one will notice that a gap in the few decades between the development. Okay, all these things, we will be dealing with different type of development and what were the causes of this kind of technological developments. Okay, first we have the coal and iron. England was fortunate in that coal and iron ore. Okay, staple materials for mechanization. There were plenty, uh, plentifully available. Okay, as were other minerals, lead, copper, and tin. Okay, until the 18th century, there was a scarcity of usable uh, iron. Iron was drawn out of ore. It was because there, uh, in the smelting process, it was not properly done. It was not properly heated because they used burnt timber and charcoal. It was used in the uh, smelting process, and poor quality of iron was produced. Now what happened? The solution to this problem was sought for years before it was solved by a family of iron masters, the Darbys of Surfire. Okay, uh, it was a trio. It was like grandfather, father, and son, all called Abraham Darby. Brought about a revolution in the meteorological industry. First, Abraham Darby uh, created, invented the blast furnace that could use coke. Uh, was derived from coal by removing the sulfur and impurities. Coke was derived by, uh, from coal by removing sulfur and impurities. This invention meant that furnaces no longer had to be depend on charcoal. The melted iron that emerged from these furnaces permitted finer and larger castings than before. 
okay the process of further was defined by uh, refined by more invention second derby that is a father he developed worth iron the which was much less brittle okay it was more stronger okay and designed the puddling furnace and the uh, which the uh, molten iron could could be rid of impurities and the rolling mill which used steam power to roll purified iron into bars okay the durability of the iron made it better material than wood for everyday items and for machinery okay uh, such was the developments okay and we uh, for me uh, iron, iron industry then came to be concentrated on specific regions as integrated units of coal mining it was near to the uh, coal mining areas uh, uh, for much facility these are this is a map in which iron and coal manufacturing area was there in the britain main areas we can see we have leeds manchester birmingham london and liverpool all of the major cities in england which we can we can name now had uh, a past of uh, uh, iron and coal industry okay now we have seen about iron and coal industry we will see cotton and cotton spinning and weaving okay the developments in the uh, textile industry the uh, britain had always worn cloth out of wool and flax okay uh, before that uh, it was at there was a time when england depended largely on indian made clothes okay as east india company's political control of parts were established okay to import along with clothes raw cotton uh, which could be spun and woven into the cloth in england it was like cotton was imported from india and it was uh, spun into threads and it was woven in england okay uh, it was like women it was actually a cottage industry okay but as series of technological inventions successfully closed the gap between the speed in spinning raw cotton okay to make it even more efficient production gradually shifted from the homes of the spinners and weavers to factories first it was a cottage industry then it started to be developed as a uh, proper uh, what we can say on a large scale industry and and the uh, finished product was exported okay and this sustained the process of colonization this is an image of a lady working in the cotton press okay and going down this this you can read it by yourself it was it is a development in different type of uh, hand looms spinning jenny we have water frame mule flying shuttle loom there was also with the spinning jenny and all this actually replaced the jobs of many common people and there were also lot of protest in order to prevent this okay it, we will read, read about it in the uh, later pages okay this is a uh, map of the cotton textile manufacturing areas here also we can see the same areas we we had leads in the cotton and and the coal and iron industry also we had manchester we have birmingham all these places can be seen seen and initially initially all this started as cotton weaving industrial areas and also coal and uh, iron industrial areas now we come to another major important sector which is steam power the realization that steam could generate tremendous power was difficult before the steam was used used mechanical power to cut the metals uh, in order to uh, run pumps all these things uh, in order to mine all these things used what uh, mechanical power and it was soon replaced by what steam power okay water as a hydraulic power was uh, known for many centuries okay with the flow of water mechanical energy can be converted to different type of energies okay uh, this meant that the steam and uh, steam okay steam power was the only source of energy that was reliable uh, steam power provided pressure at high temperatures that enabled the use of broad range of machinery okay with this pressure it helped in the mechanism of the working of different type of machinery steam power was first used in mining industries as the demand for coal and metals expanded efforts to obtain them from ever deeper mines intensified flooding in mines was a serious problem first came thomas savery built a model of steam engine called miners front but it was very slow another steam engine was built by thomas newcomen it was also uh, it was also losing energy due to the continuous cooling of the condensing cylinder then we have the steam engine used uh, only for uh, by then by james watt is coming to the picture uh, he actually he was backed by a wealthy manufacturer called thomas bolton it was very effective system okay and uh, 
and we can see what steam engines were produced in steadily growing numbers by the end of the 18th century what steam engine was beginning to replace hydraulic power after 1800 steam engine technology was further developed with the use of lighter stronger metals the manufacture of more accurate machine tools and the spread of better scientific knowledge in 1840 british steam engines were generating more than 70 percentage of all european horsepower it was it is only british engines okay you should note that canals and railways now we are coming about the networks okay we have discussed what were the major causes of industrialization what caused the root causes of industrialization and what key sectors were involved all these things we have discussed okay the uh, canals were initially built see all we have seen the growth of the coal and iron industries but we needed a mechanism to transport all this to the buyers or to the market okay the demand for coal and in, as industrial energy and for heating and light, lightning homes in cities grew constantly making the first english canal the worsley canal by james friendly had no other purpose than to carry coal from coal deposits to worsley is that the uh, so canals were used for transport of coals canals were usually built by la large landowners to increase the value of mines quarries and forest in their lands okay uh, these are some of the examples of the uh, type of canals it, were. it is not actually important in the sense of UPC just brush through it that much is needed then invention of the railways took the entire process of industrialization to a st second stage first stage was steam engine second is what railways okay uh, Richard Trevithick was devised an engine called the puffing devil that pulled trucks around the mine where, they, where he worked in Cornwall. Okay, Richard Trevitrick. Just remember it. Okay. The railway engineer George Stephenson constructed a locomotive called the Butcher that could pull a weight of 30 tons up to a hill at 4 meter per hour. Okay. First railway line connected the cities of Stockton and Darlington. Okay. Uh, and within 20 years, uh, first, uh, okay, it was completed in two hours. The distance of nine miles were completed at a speed of uh, 15 miles per hour. Okay, and next railway line connected Liverpool and Manchester in 1830, and within 20 years, speeds of 30 to 50 miles per hour was usual. Okay, actually, in this, we are seeing how you know how faster or how these developments are happening. Even though in our country, some people say we are not developing, we are far behind. We are a young nation. We are still in the process of development. Okay, so uh, it is important to note how uh, how other countries, how 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 other developed nations came to this stage, how they started, uh, and we can check whether we are on the right path. All these are important when we are looking at world history. Okay, changed life. In the uh, it, this, all these things were mainly possible because rich individuals who took risk and invested money in industries in the hope that profits could be made and that their money could multiply multiply in most cases the money capital did multiply wealth in the form of goods income services knowledge and productive efficiency did increase dramatically okay uh, we can see the growth of cities also the number of cities in england with a population of over 50000 grew from 2 in 1750 to 29 in 1850 okay and uh, there were other problems related to population as well we will come to it okay we will see newcomers were forced to live in overcrowded uh, overcrowded slums in congested central areas of towns near factories okay all these things the problems are starting from here then we will see the life of workers okay uh, a survey in 1842 revealed that the average lifespan of workers was lower than that of any social group in cities in birmingham it was 15 years in manchester 17 and in derby it was 21 more people died and died uh, it was mainly due to what epidemics okay epidemics and other <coughs> diseases uh, and we can see uh, more than 31000 people died due to an outbreak of cholera in 1832 Okay, until late in the 19th century, municipal authorities were negligent in attending these dangerous conditions of life. The government didn't care. Now we will look at the life of women, children and industrialization. Life of women and children due to industrialization. Children of the rural 
poor had always worked at home or in the farms at jobs that varied during the day and in between seasons okay now working with factories okay work in factories with long unbroken hours of the same kind of work under strict discipline and sharp forms or punishment is completely different okay as the use of machinery spread a few workers were needed industries preferred to um, prefer to employ women and children okay because they could be easily handled okay and lower wages could be paid and how was the condition for this women okay women and children children were often employed in textile factories because they were small enough to move between tightly packed machinery long hours of work including cleaning and cleaning the machines on sundays allowed them little fresh air or exercise okay children caught their accidents did happen and children caught their hair, hair in machines or crushed their hands while some died or fell into machines as they dropped off to sleep due, from exhaustion that time the minimum working hour was around 16 hours okay 16 hours even for a child coal mines were also dangerous places to work okay and uh, and because the narrow routes in which uh, more coal could be extracted they preferred children younger children worked as trappers who opened and shut doors as the coal wagons traveled through mines okay and they also carried coal on their backs all these things were done and and uh, their life was actually miserable okay women may well um, women life uh, was also nothing much different we can say they were kind of like becoming more self independent and financially stable because more work could be found for women and we have seen all the conditions and the causes of industrialization and now we are coming for the protest moments okay uh, even though all these harsh situations were happening why didn't people fight for it you may be thinking right in england political protest protest against the harsh working conditions in factory kept increasing and the working population agitated to be given the right to vote the government reacted with repression okay government was against all this government didn't want to give all these things plus uh, we can see uh, trade between europe and england was disrupted from 1790 to 1855 because war was uh, war was going on between england and france because that time we had napoleon okay parliament in 19 uh, and prices also rose okay inflation was happening uh, parliament in 1795 passed two combination acts which made it illegal to incite people by speech we can say sedition sedition was passed we cannot say against uh, the government currently this case is going on in our uh, our court also okay this term was uh, pro- okay uh, unauthorized public meetings over 50 persons protest nonetheless uh, continued against all corruption this term was used for privileges linked to the monarchy and parliament members of parliament the land owners manufacturers professionals were opposed to giving working population uh, the right to vote they supported the corn laws which prevented the import of cheaper food until prices in britain had risen to a certain level okay and uh, you will see another cause of hardship was a process known as enclosure hundreds of small farms had been merged into larger ones okay this created the poor rural families were affected and they had to sort industrial work okay and and as the machines were coming into picture labor was also hard to labors found it hard to uh, get work and in this we can see in this following uh, passages we can see the various protests Uh, that was going because of the because uh, the machines were taking over the common people's life or job opportunities then we can see the reforms see uh, laws were passed in 1819 prohibiting the employment of children under the age of 9 in factories and limiting the hours of work to those between the ages of 9 and 16 to 12 hours a day okay uh, then after intense protest by workers throughout the north of england that an act was passed that permitted children under 9 to be employed only in silk factories limited the hours of work for all the children and provided a number of factory inspectors to ensure that act was enforced okay and after 30 years of agitation 10 hours bill was passed this limited the hours of work of women and young people secured a 10 hour day for male work male workers okay all these things were uh, made possible and uh, you can just read through the debate of industrial revolution just go through it and how it started in uh, it is actually the effect of wars effect of um, 
and the causes of industrialization that is mainly discussed over here okay just go through it because uh, understanding this chapter is important other than uh, by hearting the terms or laws pass it is actually irrelevant in the sense we need to understand the uh, what were the causes of industrialization uh, what led to uh, and how were the social and uh, uh, human factors involved in the industrialization all these factors need to be understood uh, in that perspective nothing much will be asked from this chapters okay uh, so i hope uh, you people were able to follow today's chapter uh, so we'll be seeing you in next video with another interesting chapter uh, so god bless you all jai hind